Hello, John Talley here with Boats.net. Today I'm going to show you how to replace the water pump on our 2004 Yamaha F225. We do need to talk about the parts kit that you're going to need to pull this off. And actually, you only need to know one part number. That's right here. And if you have the exact same engine, why don't you check that link in the description below. It's already got one in the shopping cart and ready to go. Listen, if you're having trouble finding one for your particular application, Try drilling down from year, make, and model, and if you still can't find what you're looking for, give us a call and we can guide you to the exact part that you're going to need for your boat. So, once you've got your parts together, the special tools, well, there really aren't any for this particular project. Just a set of basic hand tools would be all you need to pull this off. So, once you have your parts and your tools together, we can go over there and I can show you how to get it done. So, let's go. First thing we need to do is go ahead and bring it up. That'll make it easier to slide it off. And as you can tell, it's never a good sign when they come in and they've got a uh, rag crammed in the exhaust. So we know this one's gonna have more issues than what we're dealing with right now. But we wanna bring it up, remove these four bolts up front, and there's one that's hidden up behind the skeg. And actually the skeg's already been removed on this one. So somebody's been having a little bit of fun tinkering around with this motor. and. Honestly, they must not have accomplished much or it scared them off. I don't know, but we're not scared. Now, as you can tell, somebody has already removed the bolt that's located up, in, up under here. So we only need to remove these other four on either side and then that'll allow us to drop the engine down. Before you do this, make sure that your machine is in neutral. Whenever I'm working on something like this, I'm wondering when's the last time it actually ran? I mean, what condition did it finally stop in? Now, as you can tell, this uh, lower unit has several issues, but we are not dealing with those yet, although we will in another video. So keep coming back to see what it's going to take to straighten out all this. So we've got all our bolts out. Let's go ahead and shake it off. So let's start by getting off the old water pump housing. Just four bolts holding it in. Get up under the edge and gently pry it up without marring the, the surface of the drive. That looks like a good place. There we go. rings this actually wasn't in that bad a shape but the real trick is when they stay in here too long that rubber starts to get really brittle bent in one position when you go to start the engine it starts to break it all up and then you've got no water flow with our housing out of the way, we just need to pry up this collar carefully. And it looks, and it looks like we're going to need to replace, yeah, this nylon collar down at the bottom because it's actually cracked on this side. So what you have here is that upper metal collar, this lower piece which is made out of nylon, and then you've got three washers below it. So we're going to go ahead and replace that locking collar there. So now with that collar out of the way, let's just get off our washers. There should be a flat, a wavy, followed by another flat. I think we're going to replace those as well because that uh, flat one's actually looking a little bit wavy now. Now, we should be able to bring up the impeller itself. So now we need to get the Woodruff key out. I'm just using a uh, chisel and carefully hopefully knock it out. 
there she goes. Pull up the wear plate. We'll be replacing it as well as the gasket below it. So we've got the gasket and the wear plate out. Let's go ahead and get this cleaned back up because what we don't want to do is cram old grease back up into the engine. So we want to get those splines cleaned up. We want to get all of this cleaned up. If it's got any wear marks on it, clean it up the best you can. Maybe with some fine emery cloth and then we can get it put back together. Grab our new gasket, get it in place. New wear plate. Now we need to press in our key. Let's see if we can get it started just with a pair of channel locks. And then we'll drive it the rest of the way in, just tapping it lightly with a hammer. Now from this point, we're gonna start using a lot of grease because especially on startup, there's not gonna be any water anywhere near this and it has to draw it up. And when it's sitting there spinning, trying to draw the water, well, we don't want it to wear itself out prematurely. So on your wear plate, go ahead and coat it down with grease. Go ahead and work it around the, uh, the input shaft. Now we can go ahead and bring our new impeller down into place. And you'll notice that it's notched on the side that, of course, needs to go down first. There it goes. Now we're getting ready to put this together. Now these parts are going to be in addition to the water pump kit that we showed you earlier. So you've got both of your flat washers, your wave washer, your nylon collar, and then this retainer. So like when we took it apart, it's going to be flat, wavy, flat, then the nylon collar. You can pretty much feel it bottom out. It actually springs up a little bit because of that wavy washer. What you're gonna need is some type of collar and this is a little over 7 eighths of an inch or 22 millimeters. So you wanna find some type of driver that will just fit over this to drive this in. And while you're doing that, you want to pull up on the input shaft. You can kind of feel it pull away from the, uh, the lower gears. And so you want to pop that into place. There it goes. So I've got the housing cleaned up. We'll put it together with a, this inner O-ring and then that wear ring, if you want to call it that. It's actually part of the housing. And then we've got an O-ring that gets held in here on the bottom side. And to hold those O-rings in place, once again, we're gonna use grease to give it something to quote, quote, stick to. Next, our inner housing. And what you wanna do here, all right, you've got these two protrusions here and here, and they're gonna line up here and here. So lay it in there, and you may have to rotate it a tick, and then it'll go down. Now, more grease, put it into this channel where that O-ring is gonna go. That should be enough. We'll take what's ever left over on our finger and just go ahead and put it inside of the housing because we definitely want it to have a good coating on it on startup, just like the other uh, wear plate. So we'll go ahead and bring it down, making sure nothing shifts on the way down now, as we're pushing the housing down, we want to turn this clockwise. That way, the impeller blades are actually bending in the right direction. And that'll just draw it straight down. There it goes. So that looks good. What we want to do next, once again, is put a little bit of grease on these bolts because in a year or however many hours, you need to go back in here 
and replace this uh, impeller again. If you don't put grease on the end of these bolts on these threads, chances are you're not going to get them out. Now would be a good time, since you still have grease on your fingers, go ahead and grease up these splines before we go to reinstall it. Put a little around the water tube intake and then on the shift shaft. All right, everything's greased up. Let's get everything tightened back down. I know a lot of people say to use Loctite on these. I'm not a real fan of that. I would rather have grease in there and just put a little bit more torque on them to make sure that they don't go anywhere. All right, guys, that pretty much wraps this one up. The only thing I have to do now is just remount the lower unit to the engine, and it'll be good to go. Well, listen, if you need any parts for your machine, why don't you come see us at Boats.net, and we can get you taken care of. Have any questions or comments? Leave them in the section below, and I'll do my best to answer them. If you like what you see, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you can keep up with whatever I'm working on next. Once again, we just want to say thank you for shopping here with us at Boats.net, and we will see you in the next video. Have a great day.